Welcome to Math 401, Applications of Linear Algebra. I'm Nathan Manning, and I am going to be the instructor for this course. I'm going to have a new approach for this course, something that I've never done before, so I hope that you'll bear with me. What we're going to do is flip the classroom. That means that I'm going to make videos for you to watch outside class. Some of those videos will be recorded by me, and some will be recorded by my colleague Jeff Adams. Each video is about 30 minutes long, and you need to watch one or two of them per class period, since we have 75-minute class periods. You're going to watch these videos before class and come to class prepared to discuss them. There'll be a short quiz on each video. The link to the video will be available well in advance on Canvas. And we'll use our class time for activities like review and discussion and more examples and working on problem sets. There will be homework, but we'll have time to do some of those problems in class. The class website, like I said, is Canvas. My email is listed here, or you can just Google me. My office is Math 2303A. That's where my office hours are, and those office hours are right after class, Tuesdays and Thursdays. A detailed syllabus and course schedule and everything is on Canvas, and you can find any changes there. So let's get started with the review now. Suppose we start with two equations and two unknowns. Say we start with x minus y equals 2 and y equals 1. I want to solve these equations simultaneously for x and y. But you see this y is 1, so you just plug it in for y in that first equation. And so x minus 1 must be equal to 2. So right away you see that x must be equal to 3. And you've solved the system of equations. There's a unique solution. x is 3 and y is 1. What was important about this is that the system of equations was in a special form called upper triangular. In fact, this upper triangular system is called special upper triangular. And that's because the coefficients of the triangle, and I'll draw the triangle here in a sec, are 1. 1x one minus y is 2, and 1y one equals 1. And we'll show you an example where that's not the case. It's going to be a an equivalent system, x minus y equals 2, and 2y equals 2, so that, again, y has to be equal to 1, and you see this triangle, y has to be equal to 1, and so, once again, x minus 1 had better be equal to 2, and so, x equals 3, y equals 1. You see that the system still has this triangular shape, but it's no longer special because of that 2 in front of the y on the second equation. So again, this is an upper triangular system of linear equations. Those are our favorite ones to solve. We like upper triangular systems because once you've solved, uh, once you've put them in a triangle, you can go to the very bottom, the last equation, and just plug in, uh, and that's called back substitution. So in this next example, We'll have a system of two equations with two unknowns, x and y. We'll say x minus y equals 2. That's the same as the first equation last time. But now we'll do 2x minus 3y equals 1. And we see that this is no longer an upper triangular system of equations. And that's because there's a non-zero coefficient in both x and y in both equations. So it's more of a rectangle than a triangle. So the strategy here is to multiply the first equation by some number and add the result to the second equation. In this case, we'll multiply by minus 2. And when we do that to the first equation, you get the equation minus 2x plus 2y equals minus 4. And when I add that to the equation 2x minus 3y equals 1, so again, I'm going to add these two equations and use the result to replace the second equation. Well, you see that when I add these equations together, the 2x and the minus 2x cancel out. And what I'm left with is minus y equals minus 3. So my new system of linear equations looks like x minus y equals 2. That first equation is unchanged. And minus y equals minus 3. And this is a happier system of equations because it's in this upper triangular form. It doesn't matter that it's not special upper triangular because you can always just divide. So in this case, we get y equals 3 right away. And that immediately means that x had better be 5. And again, we've solved this system of equations. So this highlights something called uh, the first row operation. 
Row operation number one. Add a multiple of some row. Add a multiple, say, C times row, let's call it I, to some other row, call it row J. And here, I'm always going to insist that I be less than J. So I'm adding a multiple of one row to a lower row. The goal is to turn my system into an upper triangular one. So I'll make the system be triangular. Then I can just work my way backwards with back substitution. So let's do another example. Let's start with, again, two equations and two unknowns. Uh, 2x plus 3y equals 3, and x minus y equals 4. Here I'm going to multiply the first equation by minus 1 half, and add that to the second equation. This is going to have the effect of clearing out the x in the second equation. So my new system of equations will be 2x plus 3y equals 3, and minus 5 halves y equals 5 halves. This is now in triangular form, and so we automatically get that y equals minus 1, and back substitution now says that 2x minus 3 equals 3, so 2x equals 6, and x must be equal to 3. That's our solution. x is 3, and y is minus 1. You should pause the video to do that calculation yourself. Now the key step here is turning the system upper triangular, reducing it to that upper triangular form. This is a systematic method that will always work. Well, we'll talk about that soon, but it will almost always work, rather than having to pick a variable and solve for it, something like that that you might have seen in earlier classes. Now, an observation to make is that the variables, the x and the y, weren't really very important as long as we keep track of their position. Really, it's the coefficients that matter, not the variables. So you can encode all of the data that's in this system of linear equations in the form of a matrix. So let's see that. I just keep all the coefficients, 2, 3, 3, 1, minus 1, and 4, and I'll put a little dotted line so that it's clear to me which numbers are for coefficients for variables and which numbers are uh, solution vectors, uh, numbers for the solution on the other side of the equal sign. And then when I multiply the first row by minus a half and add it to the second row, I get this, and you see that the left-hand side of this has got that nice triangular form. So let's move on to the next section. I will write A, parentheses, little AIJ, for shorthand for a box full of numbers, which we'll call a matrix. And the numbers say A11, A12, A13, as I go to the right, all the way to A1, say N. And the first column will then look like A11, A21, all the way down to AM1, and then out to, say, AMN. So here I'm going to have a box full of numbers and it's going to have m rows, 1 through m, and n columns, 1 through n. It's important not to mix these up, which is a row and which is a column. This matrix will be called m by n, not the other way around. Now, aij in that shorthand is just the number that's in the ijth part of the matrix. So we call it the ijth entry. And it's just the number that's in row i, column j. For example, if you look at a13, it's in row 1, column 3. Let's see some examples of matrices of various sizes. So there's this 1, 2, 3, 4. That's a box full of numbers. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 6, perfectly adequate box full of numbers. 
or we could put it the other way one two three four five six and you see these are oriented differently and we're going to express that by saying the first matrix is a two by two the second matrix is a two by three and the third makes it matrix is a three by two let's talk about a couple of special cases of matrices and matrix sizes the first special case is when I have, say, an M by 1 matrix. So I've got M rows with only one column. In that case, I'm going to call this column vector because it really is a vector, like in calculus, even if it's got 17 slots in it. Let's say, for example, C1, C2, down to, I don't know, CM. It was M by 1 after all. We're going to write that as C with a vector sign over it. I should never forget to do that. Uh, another special case is the 1 by n matrix. So that's going to look like a single row, one row with n columns. We're going to call that a row vector for the same reason. Say r1, r2, up to r, you know, n. And we're going to again write that r with an arrow over it. Scalar multiplication of matrices is a very important technique. It's also very simple. So what I'm going to do is I can always multiply any matrix by a number. Say, for example, 3 times the matrix 1, 2, 3, 4. And just multiply the 3 into each coordinate. So 3, 6, 9, 12. Uh, in general, if I want to multiply C by any matrix Aij's, all I would do would be to take the matrix whose Ij entry is C times Aij. Just multiply through in every spot. Now, let's talk about the dot product of two vectors, because that's going to help play into matrix multiplication, which we'll bring into the next slide. Suppose I have two vectors, V, and let's say it has components V1 through Vn, and W, let's say it has components W1 through Wn. Here, the same n, so V and W have to have the same length. I'll define the dot product, which you've seen in calculus. V dot W is the summation of Vi times Wi. I equals 1 up to n. So let's do an example of dot products. So two, three vectors, vectors not three, say one, two, three, dot product with, oh, one, zero, minus a third. So what I get is, well, the first entry times the first entry, one times one, plus two times zero, plus three times minus a third. Dot product of two vectors is a number. In this case, one minus one is zero. Okay, matrix multiplication, this is the thing that we're reintroducing or reminding you of the dot product in order to do. Suppose that I start with two matrices. A is M by N, so that has M rows and N columns, and B is N by P, say N columns, or N rows and P columns. So the point is that the number of rows of A is equal to the number of columns of B. In that case, I can take the product A times B. Okay. The ijf entry of a times b, that's the ith row and the jth column. Well, what you do is you just take the ith row of a, ith row of a, dot product with the jth column of b. jth column of b. Okay, let's, well, so you can write that as a formula. If you check this, you can check this fairly easily. You just take the summation from k goes from 1 to n of a i k b k j. That's the formula for the dot product. Let's see an example. Suppose I take this matrix 1, 2, 3, 4, and I try to multiply it by the matrix 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I see that the left hand matrix, that's my a, is a 2 by 2. In the right-hand matrix, so that's B, that's a 2 by 3. Those 2's on the inside match, so I can multiply, and what I'll get will be a 2 by 3. What 2 by 3 is it? Well, to get the 1-1 one, one entry, the first row and first column, I take the dot product of the first row of A with the first column of B. So that's 1 times 1 plus 2 times 4, that's 9. Similarly, 1-2.25 is 12, 1-2.36 is 15, 34.14 is 19, 34.25 is 26, and 34.36 is 33. That is how I multiply matrices.